Nadia from Libertor Guiding. Um, now, today I am in the highland of Otago country. There you go. As you can see, um, it's a beautiful creek going up here. Uh, the creek's only a couple feet wide at, at most, or maybe three feet at uh, certain parts. Uh, it's not a very uh, big creek, and the depth is very shallow as well. Now, I uh, caught and released one brookie just up at, uh, ahead of this pool. And after I released it, I saw another one, which was slightly bigger than the one I released it. I was darting around at the head of the riffle. So, um, see if I can catch them. I had him r rolls to my fly twice, um, but missed them both time. But they don't seem to get them at the surface, get my fly on the surface. They seem to like it when it's slightly submerged in the riffle. So I've tied a um, very small royal wolf. I don't know if you can see it. About size 16. And I don't know if you can see that to the same size half back with a bit of flash on them. So let's see if I can get this one on the flash because this fish is a bit cagey. They will not, they will come up to the surface to look at the fly, but they don't take it. I've had a three fly changes already and he's not liking it. See if I can get him under the, under the surface in the riffle. See how we go. So, just investigating a new bit of a stream. Uh, just got this real pretty one. Um, officially opened up the accounts for 2022. Uh, let him go gently. So the report's up to the minute. Uh, so where I started down the river further, there were nice waters down there, almost better water than here for the, um, for the truck, but there was none. For about a good couple, uh, two and a half k's of nothing. And when the creek really tightened up to the, that sort of width, uh, about four foot wide in the most places, some places I can even jump over from side to side, so they're only what two and a half, three foot wide in certain parts. And when they get like that, the brookies started appearing. I can sort of see why. Uh, the bottom, uh, the bedrock has got a lot more broken bits in there, so they can sit amongst the crack uh, away from the current. And also, um, there's lots of cover on the both sides from tussocks and all the other hanging uh, bushes. And uh, um, there's obviously lots of food falling off those. Um, Tussocks as well. So I can see why they are here. Now um, I've been up uh, probably about three k's up from uh, where I started seeing a fish. Um, yeah, about three k's. And uh, um, the numbers started to thin out and the size started to drop as well. So size started to get smaller and smaller. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip a lot of those uh, bouldery runs and I only fish the nicer runs and poles. Um, around the corner and I'll try to get up two three more bends up see if there's anything better up around here if not I'm gonna head back down the river and there was a two big backwaters uh, near where I started it and I have seen something in there I didn't catch them I wasn't sure whether it was a brookie or I was just dreaming of something but if it is a fish there that's a little bit bigger than the one I saw up here so um, that's my treat on the way home so I'm gonna give it a go and just see how that works. And while I'm here, I'm gonna show you some of um, what, my tackle for the day. So this is seven foot six, four weight, uh, custom built grass rod. This is uh, the one I built. This is the e-grass, which is, has a softer bend in through the middle, but really for the brookies that size, doesn't really matter. Um, it won't bend through the rod anyway. Match that with a four weight double taper line. So uh, this is a double taper line. Uh, for these tight corners fishing, double taper is much easier to maneuver the line. And uh, leader to the tippet, I've cut down the lot to control um, drift. It is about a nine foot all together. And down to this bad boy, I don't know if you can see it. So uh, size 14 blow fry. Um, I, actually the fish you eat the smaller ones much easier. But uh, um, what's happening is uh, those brookies who hit the dry so fast, 
they'll swallow a lot into the uh, throat as well. So if I tied a too small fly, they, I would have to struggle to get the, some of the hooks out of the fish. So I'd rather miss the little ones than actually let them swallow the fly. So hence why I'm using a little bit bigger one for the size they are eating. So admittedly, I'm losing a lot of small ones on the take as well. But hey, that's all good. At least I'm seeing them taking the fly. So it's still exciting. So anyway, let's see how I go. And uh, I'll report you back from way out that way. All right, peace out. Probably is the fish of the day. I'm gonna let him go. I've come about another three quarters of a kilometer from uh, where I left you off at the lunchtime down further. I was going to go a bit further up, but I uh, had so many nice turns and corners and drops. I had to put the fly through just to make sure there was uh, nothing big hiding in there. Yeah, as I thought it would have been, the creek's much smaller here, even though only it's a mere kilometer away, it's getting skinnier. But for that reason, the pool's a bit more obvious. So the, the nicer fish seems to be holding up here. If I could push up another kilometer or two, who knows, I might get the one's really nice size one as well. So the fish of the day today was about um, five and a half inches, which in the uh, current location where this is, this is a reasonably good sized fish. It wouldn't go as far as a trophy, but it's, it's a good sized fish. Um, just to give you an idea, the biggest one I ever caught in this region was one pound. So that was only what, 12, 13, 14 inches, something like that. So it wasn't that, wasn't that big fish. So five and a half inches is quite a respectful size for this region. Now I can go another few hours up the gully. Um, it does look like it's a pretty easy walk up to a couple of turns up. But sun's dipping. Uh, sun's going another probably three hours before it gets into the twilight in this gully. But as the day goes on, as the evening goes on, we're going to get a catabatic winds comes down off the hill as the cooling starts. And it's going to chill me out really fast. And uh, also, um, yeah, also, um, it's just, uh, it's just, it looks like there's a bit of overcast coming in. So the safety first, I'm going to make a V-line over that way, uh, over that hill. And uh, we'll get back to the um, sort of within the, yeah, sighting distance of a car soon. So it's got about an hour and a half walk back out to the car. So yeah, I'm going to start making my way back. I mean, I could catch a couple more fish, but uh, I've had a good day. So let's call it a day here and uh, let's revisit again sometime down the summer. All right. So we're checking you with you again next time. Peace out.